Hello, today's video is showing you how to make your own trolley cover. Now by trolley, I mean one of those three tier trolleys. You can get them in Ikea. The one I've got is from Hobbycraft. The one I'm making is for my mum and I know that she's got the same one as me, which is Hobbycraft, um, which is perfect because I have my own one to measure. But yeah, if you want to make your own, um, feel free to follow along and I'll show you how I manage to make this one. As always, if you like this video and want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. On this trolley cover, it's very simple. It's just one long piece that goes all the way up and down. Obviously, if you didn't have a piece of fabric long enough, you could add a seam at the top. You just need to add your seam allowance on that end. And then I've got a panel at the front and a panel at the back. So it's literally made out of three pieces, but then I've also got a lining again made out of the three pieces and then they're joined at the bottom. Now the design I've gone for is versatile because my mum wanted one where she could potentially store more in the top shelf if she wanted. So it's got a turn up at the bottom. Okay so just to give you an idea of what I store in my trolley. Um, I'm not sure what my mum stores in hers. I think she's got a couple as well so I don't know uh, which one she wants to cover for. But anyway so I've got lots of thread at the top, I've got my snap fasteners, um, other little haberdashery items. I've got a random section of fabrics here and it looks like I've just shoved my embroidery threads here as well. I don't normally store it on here. And then at the bottom I've got all my lovely overlocker threads. So the first thing I did in order to make the trolley cover was to take some, some measurements from this. The first measurement I took was from the base. So I took the depth, so from here over to here. I took the width. So between these two points and it took the height from again just where this um, metal bit at the bottom finishes so just above the wheel because I didn't want it to get in the way of the wheels up until here but then I did add seven and a half centimeters just in case you wanted to add a bit more a bit like I have it's not it's not flush to the top just so she can store a few extra things in the top section with those three measurements I then got about to creating the pattern pieces so this pattern, you only need to draw out two pattern templates and they're both rectangles, which is great. The first one you need to do is your side panel. So that's just over one of the wider ends. So I guess I'm going to say it's the width of the trolley. So what I did was I took the width measurement, added two centimetres. So I had a centimetre seam allowance either side or whatever seam allowance you want to use. And then for the height, I used the height that I wanted for the trolley cover that I just worked out and then added two centimetres onto that. I didn't want to worry about any corners. I don't know why, I just thought it might look a bit nicer if it was curved. So what I did do was I used a simple cup, this is from Ikea actually, and I just put it in the corner, the top two corners, to draw a curve and then I cut, or then I drew that um, curved corner rather than keeping the end. The other pattern piece I had to make were for the other two sides of the trolley cover and the top section. So I wanted one long piece to go all the way over, basically one side to the top, then the other side. So for this, I took the depth measurement and added two centimeters to get the width of this pattern piece. Okay, so for the length of this long piece, I took two, I, I calculated two lots of the height plus the width of the trolley and then I added two centimetres to that. Now, because I don't want to use loads of paper drawing out this template, I wanted to cut this piece in the fold, so I then divided that number by two. Now, there's a chance that this might be a bit big when it gets attached to the other pattern piece, but I'm going to work that out as I go along. So that's the first pattern piece, so I cut two of these, as you can see, or I cut a pair, so that, well, I guess it's symmetrical anyway. So I cut two pieces of this pattern piece, the first one for those side panels. And as you can see, there's my curved edge that I made with the cup. And then for the really long piece, I cut one of these on the fold. If you haven't got a bit of fabric that's long enough, obviously what you could do is cut two pieces, but you just need to add another seam allowance at the top edge. But there you go. So, so essentially I've got three fabric pieces for the lining and three fabric pieces for the main fabric. So the first step was to pin or peg in my case, I'm using the quilting clips to attach the panel with the curved edges to the long narrow rectangular piece. So 
I'm just working from one end, pinning it all the way around, around the curve, up on that top side, and then allowing that long piece to then be pinned to the other side. So to save time, I decided to pin both side panels to the long narrow piece straight away as this wouldn't affect it so I just yeah got both sides pegged on and then I moved to the machine to sew them in place. Once the outer piece had been made I then did the same with the lining. So I ended up with two of the trolley cover shapes, so what I did was I put one of them inside the other so that they were right sides facing and then pegged them all around the bottom hem edge and pegged those together. So once I'd pegged them all in place around, I then moved back to the sewing machine and stitched this in place, but I left a small gap so that I could turn it right side out at the end. So once I'd sewn the hem at the bottom, I then bagged it out the right way so I found that gap where I'd left a hole in the hem so that I could turn it right side and then once I'd got the right side showing I then poked the lining piece into the main cover piece ready to then top stitch my way around the whole piece. So here is the final trolley cover. As you can see, it fits fine. In fact, there's probably a little bit of extra room here, but I guess it depends what you've got on the top layer. So I haven't got it um, that overloaded at the moment. So as you can see, I've got extra room in case I did add more stuff onto the stock shelves as I had something that went up to here. I can just lower this turn up at the bottom and then it should still cover up the lower section. I think if I knew what I was going to store on this top shelf, it, it was my own, because obviously I'm giving this away as a gift. But um, depending on what they're, they're going to regularly store in this trolley cover, what I might do is put some poppers in just to keep that turn up in place. It's staying up okay at the moment, but obviously it, it probably would look a bit nicer if it had a couple of little ties or like I say poppers just to keep it in place. Just because I am a bit worried that's going to get a bit in the way and perhaps the the older it gets it might um, get a bit more worn out and a bit more prone to flopping down on its own. So after I stitched the two layers together I did find that I definitely had to catch the two sides of it together so the lining and the main colour so I did do a tiny bit of hand stitching in four corners at the top just where the curves are just because I found that otherwise um, it would be quite hard to put on top of your trolley because then you'll be continually contesting with it, if that makes sense, because the, the piece you want on the inside might be flopping down as you're trying to trying to cover the whole trolley. So yeah, so it's just an idea if you did want to um, add a cover to your trolley, it just saves it getting dusty, I guess. I think my mum's probably thinking if my niece is around, they're quite young, it will at least stop them um, grabbing hold of lots of potentially dangerous items that could be on there. I don't know what she stores on there, but I guess, you know, there might be a lot of small little things in there, whereas this will be a bit more of a deterrent. But also, you know, she might be storing stuff that she doesn't use quite as often as I do with my trolley, so it just means that it keeps it dust free. Well, obviously you have to wash the cover every now and then, I guess. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.